All right, welcome back, Mossy Oak Moments Live. We're well into this project and I'm loving it. Even though there's a rumor this week, there's gonna be some duck footage. Man, I'm excited. <laughs> anyway, lots of deer stuff. Sure, we gotta do waterfowl. I, I, look, I don't hate waterfowl. Uh, I don't mind filming, it just ain't my cup of tea, but this week we're gonna incorporate ducks, geese, whatever they're chasing. But we do have whitetails, y'all stay tuned. So this is the beginning of season five, and um, this year we're gonna try to do things just a little bit different than we've done in the past. One of the things we're gonna try to do this year is to publish a few more episodes than we have in the years past. We'll try to bring you some more content, and we're really gonna try to focus on more of the hunting and the people that are involved in the hunts. Whereas in years past, we've kind of told some really cool stories and shown it in a really cinematic light, and written in a journal a whole bunch. This year, we're really gonna focus on individual hunts and the people on those hunts and uh, kind of the, the things that really make hunting special to us. Um, and so we're gonna call this thing Just Hunting. It's obviously not gonna be about just hunting, but it's primarily gonna be this year about the hunting content. And we're, we're pretty excited about that. And so this first episode is uh, gonna be where we start every year right here at home in Somerville um, for the early goose season. And like every year, as we get into the last couple weeks of August, we're anxious and calling every farmer that we know looking for uh, corn that's been shelled. And um, this year, like every year, it seems like there's never enough shelled, but there's always just a little bit enough for us to hunt. And so as we started scouting leading up to the opener, we found a couple spots that had geese in them, both on corn and um, on some sod. And then Hurricane Ida rolled in. And when the hurricane rolled in, we didn't get nearly the weather that we expected. Um, we got a little bit of rain, but I, I don't know. It, it, through that storm, it just seemed like all of our geese just scattered and, and sort of for a couple days there stopped coming to all the places they'd been coming for the previous four or five days. And so. As we went to bed the night before the opener, we really didn't have a great plan for where we were gonna hunt on September 1. And so we sort of, as we compared notes and scouting logs and everything, we just said, you know what? When we don't have something good, let's get up and scout. And that's kind of always our rule of thumb. If we're on the road in Canada or out in the Midwest and we don't have something good, instead of forcing a crummy hunt, go scout. You know. Diesel fuel kills ducks is kind of our, our, our mantra and same for, same for geese. So we started looking around, went and stopped at one farmer's shop and first guy we talked to was like, you know what, there's a couple hundred over here. They're, uh, they're, they're, they're using this pond that this church just dug. And uh, so we, we kind of, he showed us on the map. Heck, we drove over and sure enough, there was the pond, like he said, and, and, and it had, you know, fresh dirt where they kind of dug it out and it, and it just looked like a spot that geese would loaf and roost because it you know there's some Bermuda that had been planted there but there was also some bare dirts and, and it was just kind of the right size pond for the geese to come in and out of and so we sat there and looked at it and thought about it and about that time that we were deciding where we were going to go next to find these geese here comes a line of geese uh, out of a field. We got the binoculars and started looking. Here comes another line, and another line, and another line. And it was, I guess it was just perfect timing that um, they were in the shelled cornfield we said they were gonna be in, but they're kind of in this low spot where we couldn't see them from the road. And if we couldn't see them from the road, nobody else could. And we just happened to be sitting at the loaf pond at the right time, mid-morning, when they started rolling back out of the field. And man, we sat there and it was just like, 
group after group after group after group, and they were the right size groups, like sixes and eights and stuff like that. And it didn't take long watching them to know this was really going to be a special hunt. So we locked down permission and decided that we'd run back to the house. I had a bunch of work I needed to do, and Rhett really, bless his heart, he needed a nap, some beauty rest. And on our way back to the house, Dylan called me. He was a couple hours away. He said, hey, I'm coming back home. Where can I help scout? Y'all got room for me to hunt? And I said, absolutely, love for you to hunt with us. You can sit on this field, you and Rhett, this evening while I work, and y'all can put them to bed, check the hide. So after they checked it, put the geese to bed, and watched them go to roost, um, we were able to really figure out, so instead of A-frames or you know something else, we were gonna have to do layouts. So made a plan, got everybody together, and layouts for an older se early season goose hunt means you gotta get there super early because it just takes forever to brush blinds. And nobody likes to brush your blinds. But it was a good thing we did because this one, this will go down as one of the better first hunts of the year. It was an absolute smash. <laughs> With my eyes to the sky It's supposed to be cold up there in North Dakota.
Dakota this week. I know they got some new birds. Plumbo has been shooting them. Should be a fun week. It's that time. It's that time of year. It's finally getting cold. I've been waiting for it for the last six months. Time, huh? You know what's weird? Never hunted the same. We've never hunted this area early season and in the fall. Feels good though. Feels good to be back. Should be good. Nice brisk 38 degrees right now. A few flurries in the air. What we got going on in here? Ronnie and Q destroyed both of the bathrooms. Came in and that's the first thing they had to do. Wow. Better in the bathroom than in my pants. Mama B is going to be mad at you. <laughs> so it's our first night here in North Dakota and Tyrell and I are out here scouting and Tyrell says these ducks have been moving really late so they haven't really flown yet we're just now seeing some honkers and some specks starting to fly and feed um, good grief a lot of snow geese are here I mean a boatload um, which is usually a good sign it means the ducks are somewhere nearby um, they just haven't flown yet so we got uh, probably another, what, hour of scouting. Um, and so we got a few other spots that he's been looking at over the last few days. We're gonna go check out those spots and hopefully by then the ducks will be flying. First morning in North Dakota, just getting set up, about to pull the trucks out of the field. Absolutely no wind this morning, 18 degrees, super cold. If the wind was actually blowing, it'd be really, really cold out here. But uh, some lessers in here last night, Ronnie and Ty found this field, some ducks. The ducks didn't want to fly much last night, but uh, we're just assuming they're coming off this water and hopping right into this cut cornfield down at the bottom. There's a lot of tracks down in here, it looks good. We got a good tumbleweed hide. Hopefully this wind picks up a little bit and we have a good hunt. You might remember an episode called The Pea's Knees. It was one of the most memorable and greatest duck hunts we've had since doing Heart in the Waterfowl. And we're coming back to the scene of the crime. Is that cool? I might have overstepped a little bit when I said it would be the most bird you've ever seen on Heartland Waterfowl, but it was still pretty cool. And after what happened yesterday, 
That's very rewarding. It's called redemption right there from yesterday, Joe. Redemption. Bob Marley wrote a song about it. There ain't nothing better than shooting ducks. So the past couple summers, the river's been really high and we haven't been able to get into the duck hole areas to do a lot of the planning that we would have liked. This year, uh, the river did get down. Uh, as soon as it dried up enough for us to get in there, we dissed and planted. I think we got about you know, 35, 40 acres of millet planted. Got a real good stand coming up and I feel like just as soon as it gets water on that millet, the ducks will be in there. So this off season, our main focus, uh, number one was finishing the camp. The first two years we had a pair of bumper pull campers and uh, we built a pole barn over them and man, when we got that pole barn up, we, we thought we were in high cotton. After several days of rain, it got pretty nasty. So having the camp now, as opposed to those campers, is uh, it's night and day. I guess it was around opening day last year was when the first post went in the ground. Uh, and so we had, we had some guys come and frame it up, but other than that, finishing out the camp has been all done by our group of buddies. Uh, we're very fortunate to have some friends that are, you know, jacks of all trades, so to speak. Doing it all ourselves kind of makes it that much more special to know that pretty much everything inside that camp we touch uh, so, you know, everything in the camp, our group of buddies has had a hand in making it what it is. And so I think it's about 2,600 square foot of living space. And we've got a big, nice porch off the front overlooking the river. And uh, it's a really special place. Uh, besides finishing the camp, uh, water was our, you know, biggest priority when it comes to hunting. Well, pumping water is new to us here um, on the island with the river being the level it's at. So we ended up having to barge two tractors, uh, two big relift pumps, and some. Uh, we started with some 16-inch corrugated pipe, and we quickly realized that wasn't doing what we thought it would do. Um, so we had to go with some heavy-duty lay-flat uh, pipe, hooked to those pumps so we could uh, get the water on the island. Granted, it's not where we want it, but we got enough to do what we need to do over here as far as shooting ducks. So we'd been running our pumps for a while and most of the water we were pumping was going into an area that uh, the, the water was getting in there good, but it didn't 
have as much huntable area as we would have liked and we were hoping to divert, dig a ditch and divert some of the water into another hole that's kind of more set up for a lot of different winds and a little bit bigger hole. So in the, in the process of, of Murray digging us a ditch, he got the mini stuck. And in the process of getting the mini out, Harrison and Murray got the dozer stuck. So we've got our two main pieces of equipment that are down and out. They get a tractor to haul some heavy barge rope down there to help get the tractor stuck. So we've got three semi-major for the island pieces of equipment and they're all stuck at the same time. It was a bad feeling. We need to be pulling from the bottom. Otherwise, this, uh, this mini stuck like God put it here. So I wasn't involved in any of this, but here I am trying to get out and then they still won't listen to what I, what I got to say. So I've been wrong twice in the past five minutes. Well, we managed to get the dozer out. Well, that little excavator, she's still down there taking a nap. I, I, I don't know what we're gonna do. I guess we'll get it out or, like Harrison said, put a mailbox on it. So my 2020-2021 duck season prediction, I feel like it's gonna be a banger, but we got to get some water quick and freezes up. All the ducks around here are gonna be coming to the river. Uh, if we've got some water on the island that we can keep moving, uh, it could be really good. You know, regardless of how this season goes, one thing's for sure, we ain't got to sleep in them damn campers no more. You know, they're supposed to sleep seven comfortably. I think one time we had 13 in one. You know, me and Eddie was laying on the floor sleeping. At times, Eddie would sleep on that kitchen table in the camper that folded out to a bed. Uh, you could feel that north wind coming right through that camper. If it wasn't the wind coming through, it was water. So, uh, that's for sure. We ain't, them campers, I don't even know where they at. They ain't on this island, and I'm, I'm glad of that. Here we go. Now, look up classics. Look up the word classic in the dictionary and it will tell you it's something special, something that's timeless. I don't know anything more timeless than we've, what we're fixing to show you right now. The great Bo Jackson, greatest athlete of all time, my opinion, and I'm no sportscaster, and his coach Pat Dye hunting ducks. Now, I hope there's a clip in there of how good Bo Jackson was at reloading his gun. He would put those shells in between his fingers and it happened so fast. But hey, it's Bo Jackson and Coach Pat Dye. Check this out.
I grew up on a farm, and, and uh, the greatest times that I can remember as a youngster growing up were a hunting and fishing trip with my brothers and, and father. It was a way of life to us, and we did all kind of hunting. We didn't have this kind of duck hunting in Georgia where I was raised, but we hunted quail and dove, had uh, we'd float the creeks and shoot ducks, and fished all of the, the reservoirs and the creeks and the rivers. I think that getting the youth involved is, is vitally important to not only for their benefit, but for the benefit of the, uh, again, the generations to come. You know, it's, be, it's been such a thrill for me all my life to, to be able to participate in, in these kind of activities and the social life and the friendships and the friends that you make on hunting and fishing trips is, uh, you know, they're lifelong friends. It's good, clean, wholesome uh, recreation. Here in the United States, we've got national forests and parks and and uh, places for, that anybody can, can hunt and fish. I mean, we're just very, very blessed and need to do everything we can do to preserve that. And I encourage every father, mother, uh, uncle, grandfather, whatever, if you've got a youngster or, or a neighbor that's got a kid, introduce them to the, to the nature and the, and the wildlife and the fishing. The thing that I've learned over the years that it's absolutely impossible to give more than you receive. And uh, if you give a little time to these youngsters, then you'll get more th a bigger thrill out of it than, than, than they do. I'd much rather see one of my kids or one of my grandchildren uh, have the thrill of, of catching a fish or my wife or whoever. I'd much rather see somebody else uh, have that thrill now than me. My thrill is seeing them have the thrill. And, uh, and the, the ones that have been blessed to have grown up and have the knowledge and the expertise to, to pass it along, don't miss that opportunity because it's a, it was passed down to me from my father and his father and we just need to make sure that we, we continue the education of our generations to come. I think Bo shot that duck. That little old bracelet on that duck comes straight from town out here. Okay, coach, take him, cut him, coach, take him. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. That's on cup. That's on cup. They gonna come in. This grunt is coming in. They gonna come in. This drunk is coming in. They're right over top of here, Coach. Keep your 
Take him, bro. Take him. You're a little <laughs> That's War Eagle shoot. War Eagle. War Eagle. I don't know He can shoot him. I don't know whether they can call him or not. See, there's a technique to it. The technique. See, see, I got a three read duck call. It's a not three read. Yeah, but it's not on the market yet. Yeah. <laughs> but you play it like a trumpet. <laughs> Are you cold? No, just my fingers from holding this. <laughs> I ain't cold. Okay, coach. Take him, take him, coach. Take him. Did you get the one with the band? We got him in here somewhere. He's in here. He's in here. We'll, we'll locate him. There he is. What is That's the one. He come from downtown, one. didn't he? Thank you. He come, he come right from downtown. 20, number 2387. A high class duck. It was spaced out about right. Yeah. And because uh, you know, if we'd have had them all in the first 30 minutes, we wouldn't have had any sunshine either. No, no sunshine wouldn't like get a good picture like this. All right, normally this is my favorite part of Mossy Oak Moments Live, Ingredient Wild. We've had on a pork belly taco, we've had some unbelievable stuff this week, going to duck. Uh, I don't have a duck recipe. I've tried it a whole bunch of different ways. Maybe I'm just not a, have a duck palate. I don't know what it is. But Chef Nathan is making duck poppers. Now, my guess is there's bacon involved maybe some jalapenos and cream cheese and all that. Now, depending on how big a piece of duck meat that is, I could probably eat these. Let's check out Chef Nathan and duck poppers. Hey y'all, Chef Nathan here. Um, about to go over one of the uh, most classic um, you know, appetizers at uh, hunting camp, the uh, duck poppers. Um, you know, when it comes to wild game, you could wrap bacon around just about anything and throw it on the grill and it's gonna be delicious. But I'm gonna show you the way I do it and um, hope you enjoy um, the process and the flavors that go with it. So um, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take duck breasts, um, just a little bit of Creole spice with that. Flip them over here. We're going to put a little bit of salt on there as well. All right, we're going to set those aside, let them hang out for a minute. Um, and then we're going to, we're going to half cook our bacon. We're going to basically get our bacon um, to a place where it's halfway cooked. So whenever you um, roll the, the duck poppers up and cook them all together. 
Um, you don't overcook the duck while you wait for the bacon to cook. So all you want to do is, is cook it about halfway. Throw it here on the grill. We're just going to let that cook down. So it's about halfway done. All right, now that we've got the bacon cooked off uh, where we want it, we're going to sear off our duck breasts. Um, it's real important not to overcook these um, since they don't have the fat on top. Um, just really quick, you want to cook them to about rare because um, then we're going to slice and put them in the bacon, that way they don't overcook. So uh, we've turned up the heat a little bit on our grill. Um, we're going to utilize that bacon fat that we just cooked with um, to sear off these duck breasts. And what's great about this is uh, you know, the, the, one of the bigger things with doing this, with this creole spice, you're kind of toasting all the seasonings in that creole spice, uh, which is adding to that flavor. All right, so once your duck breasts are, uh, are rested really well, we're just gonna slice these really thin on a bias, so kind of across the, the breast. All right, I like to build these in sets of five. So I use these little bamboo skewers and we'll, uh, we'll put five rolls on each bamboo skewer. So I like to line up my bacon. Five at a time here. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna take our, our duck meat, we're gonna put it right inside the bacon We're going to take these pickled uh, peppers. These are just basically pickled jalapenos, but we add a little extra sugar um, to the pickling brine. So they're a little bit sweeter, and then they also make a great sauce to top the, the pepper or the um, poppers with. Um, you can absolutely make your own, or if you really wanted to and uh, you didn't have time or the resources to make your own pepper, pickled peppers, you can get pickled uh, jalapenos from the store. You can take the brine out of the jar, and you can just... Uh, um, cook it with a little bit of sugar, and it'll uh, it'll thicken it up, and uh, and make a nice little sauce with your pickled with your pickled jalapenos. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take one jalapeno and put it right there on top of the duck breast. And then we're just gonna roll these guys up. A 
and put them on these skewers. You just roll these guys up. Just so they keep on putting the skewers, just kind of line them up on that skewer. So they all just fit perfectly on there. Alright, so we got these made. Now we're just gonna go right back on the grill with this. So we're just gonna we're gonna set it right there. Gonna press it down on that. Make sure that that uh, bacon gets nice and caramelized. Alright, now we're ready to uh, flip these poppers over. Get them going on the other side. Again, press them down. See, make sure that bacon's really touching the grill and gets nice and caramelized and we'll let them go. All right, once they're done cooking, take them back, put them on the old cutting board. You just take them right out the skewer. I like to serve them with uh, another pepper on top. I'm going to take a little bit of that juice from the pickled peppers and just a little bit on top of the poppers. All right, every week they ask me to give you a tip, talk about something, cuss talks, whatever it is. We've done broad heads, what's a shooter buck, all that stuff. And Rusty says, calling duck tips from Cuss Trickler. <laughs> and of course, that was followed by laughter from everybody in the building. I'm, I couldn't, I don't know how to call ducks. Let me tell you about my introduction to duck calling. Toxie sent me to the World Championship Duck Calling Contest in Stuttgart, Arkansas, Flooded Timber World. That's a big event. And I went over there, set up my mossy oak table, you know, had little brochures and stuff. And the hardcore guys were already on bottom land. Everybody's on bottom land now, but they were already on. Anyway, I had my table set up, was there listening. I mean, it's loud. Duck calling's loud. Anyway, I went to the restroom. This guy, I'm coming out and this guy's coming in and he's got, you know, a, a bottom land vest on, duck bands around his neck. It's like, I mean, it's just loaded with patches and all that stuff. And he looks at me and he said, did you kill any ducks this year? I said, I shot a pool dude with my 22. Does that count? And he just looked at me for the longest time. And I was like, I'm kidding, I don't duck hunt. You don't duck hunt, what are you doing here? I said, I work for Moss Hill. Then we had a great conversation. It just ain't my cup of tea. Every time I've been on a duck hunt or something, the first one I went on to film for a major TV show was way up north. And it was like Northern Minnesota, snow geese, something, anyway. The ground was frozen so hard, and we had to dig a pit, me and Troy Ruiz. Got out there about five o'clock, watched the ducks lift out of this field, go to this water, and we started digging our pits with these pick shovels and axes and stuff, and literally dug a small grave to get in and finished just before daylight to go get the gas and come back out. So that's what waterfowl hunting means to me. Way too much work for something I don't care to eat, but you know what? It's some of the coolest stuff ever to video. We got great video there. And I'm picking, if I knew more about it, I'd probably love it. I ain't the guy for calling tips. All right, we got some straight hunting, you know, that's made up in here in the Mossy Oak group. All these guys going and chasing stuff. Got a little bow hunting in Oklahoma with Jake Meyer. I call him Jake from State Farm, but he's a pretty good bow hunter too. Y'all check this out. Oh, bug. 
also our first deer. It's my first deer for the year. It's October 6th, and it's our first evening on this hunt here at Canadian River Hilton in northwestern Oklahoma. Got our first deer coming in. It's a little spike. And there's some turkeys coming in too, but man, we're in here and we're after a gorgeous buck. And I'm hoping he comes in because he'll be he'll be one of my personal best if we get a get a good shot at him. So fingers crossed, but it's so good to be back in the whitetail woods. It's our third evening here at Canadian River Hilton in Western Oklahoma. Last night, I came to full draw at my target buck. Gorgeous, gorgeous deer. Right when I was getting ready to settle the pin in on where I wanted to aim and start pulling through the shot, it just started walking off and just walked straight away. I've got a three pin black gold adjustable sight. Last night he was at 30, so right now I'm just practicing of aiming low with my 35 yard pin just to get 
uh, really good. If he does the same thing he did last night, I'll be ready for that shot. If I don't have time to adjust my pin like I would prefer to, I'm, I'm practicing on, you know, compensating with my three fixed pins. So I'm shooting 30 yards, aiming low with my 35 yard pin. I've got 20, 35, and 50, and I got three uh, arguably quarter and away heart shots right here. So that's what we're after. I will take that. I just need him to do what he did last night and give us, like, no joke, two more seconds is about all I needed. It's our, it's our last morning and they're calling for rain this evening. So we thought we had to hunt this morning. So we slipped in here super early and that eight pointer showed up right at daylight. And he just presented us with a perfect 18 yard, slightly quarter and away shot. Super pumped, gorgeous buck. Last day, last morning, probably last sit with the rain coming. Could not be any happier. Awesome, awesome stuff. Oh yeah, things are looking good now, big boy. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, really good blood. He's really starting to pour it out now. Good blood. There he is. Mm, yes. Man. Gosh, what a cool buck. Oh, what a gorgeous buck. It's been a crazy week. We're out here in Oklahoma, Canadian River Hilton, and we're hunting with Academy Sports and Outdoors. It's just a co-sponsored event we did with them here at Canadian River Hilton and Justin Akins, and he uh, always puts us on such good deer. It's been hot, and the last two days had highs in the upper 90s, and on the second evening of our five day hunt, I encountered a gorgeous buck, came to full draw on him and everything. It was just settling my pin in on where I wanted to aim and was about to start pulling through on that shot and the buck just started walking and, and he just walked straight away and got out of there and he was, at, he was gone. So then that was the second evening and the next two days were in highs in the upper 90s and we actually still saw quite a few deer. 
Um, we had a hog clear our entire set last night, so it was the last day of a five-day hunt. We slipped into our spot super early. As the sun just started to reveal itself, Cody and I look up and we just see this gorgeous eight-pointer heading our way, a super mature deer, and eventually he presented me with a great 18 or 19 yard quarter and away shot and um, always so thankful when I for when I hit these deer where I'm aiming because uh, it led to a, a good shot and a very uh, quick quick clean kill and a, a quick recovery on such a gorgeous animal but can't thank Justin Aikens enough at Canadian River Hilton uh, can't thank him enough for the friendship the partnership and uh, always just being such a good guide and putting us and our guests on these great deer Awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs>
Well, we had a pretty good evening. Where'd you put those logs at? Right here. Rain caught us, rained on us for about 30, 45 minutes. And when that rain let up, deer started moving. So just what we was hoping. And we had the deer we were looking for come in, but he went to beans, went to corn, went back to the beans, went back to the corn. He never made it where he was at before shooting light expired, and we had him at 30 yards about probably five to ten minutes after shooting light, but hey, it's all good. It was fun. We had a good time, so uh, we're going to try him again. We got a little bit more intel on him, though, now. We know where he's coming from a little better. At least we think we do, so hopefully we can use that against him. Try another day. Rain makes corn. Corn makes whiskey. No, rain makes corn. Corn makes deer. Yep. <coughs> corn makes our deer feel a little frisky. Here we are, October the 12th already, man. Half the month's gone by, but uh, we're sitting down here what we call Boner Bottom. Big, big field, big bottom field grown up in CRP. We got a cornfield and some beans planted down here. Most of the deer, they work here while from tops in the afternoon. We set this set last night, had a bunch of bugs, does both in here. We didn't see the deer was looking for it though, so we're hopefully it'll come through here tonight. pressure day. Beautiful day for the fall. Just beautiful fall day. It's still a little bit warm, but other than that, it's just picture perfect. Got everything else. <laughs> All right, so uh, we had a pretty good evening. We saw the deer we was after, but gosh, again, he just didn't come down there close enough before we ran out of shooting light. So, But we learned a little bit more from him, so hopefully we can use that against him. Had a lot of deer move, but they didn't move the last 30, 40 minutes. But uh, other than that, it was a good night. So we're going to go up here and turn the TV on right quick and see who wins this ball game. Go Braves! We know where he stays. We're going in there after him tonight. 
we know right where he stays. Well, we can't beat them, we're gonna join them. We done decided they're just, they just too far above us and beyond us and deer years. So what we're gonna do is go in there and we're gonna take his favorite toy tonight and put it in there for him and see if, uh, um, see if he likes it. And if he does and he comes to her, then uh, this is gonna be game on. If he don't and he goes the other way, then we'll go from there. Spray down real good with nose jammer. I sure would like to know if he can come up to that scrape right there. Maybe when we get there, one of us can run over and grab that card out of that uh, green plot right there. Okay. If I was in a tree, I would need that insulated underwear. Place is tore up with scrapes and rubs everywhere over there. Just, you can't believe how many scrapes and how many big rubs there are right there. We went over yesterday, check a stand that we had there. There was nothing to make us want to come back today. So Kyle and I both had the same idea with all that sign, that buck in there, and then our deer walked through right inside that field. It's a little spot we call playground. It's a little field. We hunted it yesterday morning. And uh, or two days ago. Anyway, all of a sudden he's just quit showing up for like the last three days and he showed up. We got 18 mile an hour winds today. And so long story short, he showed up in there at lunchtime today. I feel like he's close by right here. So we brought, we came in, got a doe decoy right here. Got her set up right out in front of us. I sprayed her down with nose jammer so he couldn't smell my scent on her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Man, you never know. Okay, so it is, it is just the 7th of November. Uh, the bucks, have, most of the bucks we see, or don't see, we'll see one cruising every now and then. Most of them are with their, their does, they're locked down with does. So we know within 48 to 72 hours, he's gonna breed that doe enough times that he's gonna be back on his feet. This deer we're watching, that we're hunting, he found a doe, the best that we can tell. Um, this is Saturday night, Thursday afternoon. So Friday afternoon, Saturday afternoon, so 48 hours will be this afternoon. So hopefully he'll get her bred, get back on his feet, get looking again. Our thought is this, if he's in this general area and he hears us rattling, that he will come to the edge of this field and see these decoys. If he don't have a doe with him, he'll see Nancy out here parading her stuff. And hopefully he'll just come in here to her and give us a shot. That's the plan for this. We'll set to see how it works. Hope and pray it works. There he is, man. He's on that ridge. I gotta get him, I gotta get his attention. I need another arrow. Gotta get him. Baby, we did it! <laughs> we knew we would. We knew we would, buddy. You called it. We did it! You called it. <laughs> we did it, buddy! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Thank God, hallelujah. Man, that thing shot, I did not think about that. It shot so high. We well, gotta get them boys on the phone. What do you think? We did it, baby. We did it, yes, man. We took this morning off, Kyle went to church. I said, take this morning off. We're gonna wait. You ain't gonna believe what I was just doing. I'll have to show you later. We got him, baby. Oh, he's dead. That second arrow, it, burnt, it done him in. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Whew, he's been a tough one, boy. But he didn't get past the day. He came out on that hill, and we seen him. Had these decoys out. Everything was perfect. And I'm telling you, man, I rattled. I tore him horns up till I got his attention, and he'd come back.
Can you see that? Huh? We got him. We got him? We killed him. Who is that? Awesome. We had both decoys out. And it was about to get dark, and he'd come out on that father's hill up there, shot him in the same stand we killed Toad from. Is that, is that him laying out? Yeah, there's him. Something downwind? No. He came out on the hill up there in the playground where all the deer come out in gun season. And I saw him come out. I saw him come out, man. I started hitting horns and rattling. And I was rattling this thing all up. It finally got his attention. He ran down here. I got a buck in the doe decoy right there. See it? It was more than he could bear. <laughs> That's awesome. Congrats. Thanks, All right, let's go get him. I'll get my hands around this big boy. Tank. He's a tank. Look at that. Beautiful. Got everything. Split two on one side, split three on another side. Man. We didn't want to get our hands on him. Okay, so. We passed this guy two years ago when he was three and a half. And I uh, kind of got his name from the neighbor. Neighbor, he, he would text me last year and he would say, are you sure this deer is four and a half? And I would say, well, we felt like he was three and a half last year. You know, that's just our best guesstimate. We are dealing with wild deer, so sometimes you're not always right. But long story short, we believe him to be five and a half. Uh, he's nice, mature, big old massive deer. Split brow on one time, got a kicker here, got a split two on his uh, uh, left side and a split three on his right side. So, man, he's got a lot going on. He's got a dagger type brow here. This one right here splits. I'm telling you, he's up there with some of the bigger deer I've ever killed. And what's so ironic about this deer is all the different places we hunted him, the cameras we had out, is that we were finally able to uh, zero in on his home range, which he totally moved. He totally changed his home range. He's been on us since the rut started. And honestly, I can't say if he did that last year or not. I don't know because I wasn't in here hunting this area, but my neighbor said he had him many times last year because he would text me, you sure this deer's four? And I would be like, yep. So we were able between us and thankful for our neighbor, uh, for a good neighbor, we were able to get him to five and a half and uh, if he'd have killed him, I'd have been happy for him. And uh, I'm just blessed. Pretty much this deer had lived on us pretty much all year this year. I don't know if he just moved his home range back, but he definitely rutted right here. And uh, man, look at this. It's such a beautiful night. I, I sent an Instagram how beautiful of an afternoon, November afternoon it was. I put that on Instagram tonight because it was just so pretty out here. It's just what you dream of. Then you look right here and you see the moon and that big old planet or that star in the sky. And it's like, man, nothing like it. Nothing like hunting, killing these big old boys right here. They put on a chase, I tell you. They give you money's worth. Oh look, there's where we're in that tree there. Yeah, no. Good Lord. Look at the body on that deer. That's what we're so pumped about. We got to, we got to weigh him. Yeah, we got to weigh him. Yeah. Look, I mean, it's... Man. Oh, he's pretty. Yeah, he is, he's real pretty. He's, I think he's gonna be a little bigger than you think.
here. So yeah, I didn't really know. know. That thing's body is huge. I know. Don't even look at it. You are seeing toad. That deer, it, it, it's got to be a son. Yeah, they're similar. I mean, that if he's not 300, I don't know how you get to 300. Oh, you ought to seen him right there. Did you see that picture of him the other night when he come up to that blind? Look up there. All you could see was his neck like this. It was crazy. All right, Facebook Live. Here we go. Really? Nah. Do, you, do you want to? It was so frustrating having this deer, the first encounter I have with him and not be able to seal the deal. Crazy, and, and I definitely, definitely never expected to have another chance at him, especially such a good chance like that, having him right there at 20, 25 yards. Hopefully he doesn't uh, 
to get a chance to have a night, and he doesn't make it to nine or ten. <laughs> Got his binos. No binos. shoulder opposite shoulder which is what I figured yeah penetration all the way up to there he's dead no worries let's go get him buddy we got him buddy didn't make it very far unbelievable Look at the body on that thing. Holy smokes. Oh my gosh. I mean, if we're in the business of hunting mature deer, holy smokes. I've hunted a long time and I've not knowingly shot a deer anywhere that near this old. I don't think that I've ever even, I haven't hunted a deer that's this old. Absolute giant body. His backbone is kind of sticking out actually. He's probably, feeling his age a little bit about now December whatever it is 22nd crazy he's always had this beam that curls up on this side and uh, this is this I never told these guys why I named him this but uh, I named him little John the first time I got pictures of him because he, he turned up instead of turned down so I turned down for what so <laughs> he turned up and he's always had that turned up beam that almost looks like another point coming off and he's got it on this side too this year pretty good turned up but that's, that was his distinct feature. You could always pick him out in trail camera pictures right away. 
Yeah. Wow. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to me and everybody. <laughs> That's so cool. Lost my, uh, I had an orange stocking cap and apparently it fell off uh, when I was walking in. And so I don't have another orange hat and I don't want to walk back out, but we're going to try to cut this vest off and then zip tie it into my hat. So I'm in legal. What a great hunt and, and just incredible to get a second opportunity at that buck out of the same food plot within a couple weeks when he's eight, nine, ten years old and I hunted him for five years basically and never had a chance before and then to have it happen again out of the same plot was just really something I didn't expect to happen and, and really an incredible experience. Big buck. We got a big buck, didn't we buddy? Buck. Yep. He can hold it. It's memories that it's always going to be with me, and I'm never going to forget it. Genesis 27.3 Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver, and thy bow, and go out to the field and take me some venison. This was Isaac talking to his son Esau. Before Isaac was about to pass, he wanted to share his blessing with Esau over a meal of venison. Even as far back as the times of the Bible, venison has been important to the human race. So now, join me and my blue collar team as we chase giant whitetails across the Midwest. Our goal is to make you a better hunter. I'm Ben Rising, and this is Whitetail Edge. Yeah, baby. I'm about to go lay my hands on probably the biggest buck I've ever shot. I just spoke to Sherry. Yep, he's going down, sis. This beautiful buck, I couldn't be more happy to take him back home to Indiana. There he is. Oh my god. I just smoked a giant on a Black Widow mock scrape, baby. <laughs> On this week's episode, we're following Paul Jansen and his boys in Illinois for a bow hunt and a gun hunt. Then we're going to join Kenny Bevins in Indiana as Kenny's season is progressing, doesn't kill, but you can't believe the deer he passes up. Paul's new to our team last year. He's a good add to our team. He brings a lot of uh, pizzazz, so to speak. Uh, he keeps our meetings lively. Uh, he's always got something funny to say. And he's a really good dude. And Paul is a food plot freaking master. He loves to plant food plots. I mean, he just loves being outside. I really appreciate that about Paul and how he's passing on the traditions to his family. His family still takes it to the extreme during gun season. You know, the whole family gets together. They're scattered out all over the county hunting deer, gather back at night and have dinner, drink beers. You know, you name it, they're just a very social family. They keep the camaraderie in hunting amongst their family, which I respect. Paul with Whitetail Edge again. Wow, here's still filming again. I got my big bus right here. Southwest wind blowing over this ridge right here. All summer long, I had them coming out right here, dog laying, heading out to the crop fields. We got this big cornfield along, weed patch along this. A bunch of oak trees and everything else in here, so. Out the phase. You get foamed up good. Got the acorn trees. Got the black web. Let's see if that's going to help out. But bear with me. Solo filming tough, but hopefully I can get it done tonight. Nice night. sitting on a old stand that's a favorite of mine. I got a pond to my back. I've got an 
east northeast wind that's blowing across this pond. We've got some standing corn here. I just recently shelled the corn right behind us. There's a pinch point right here. What they do is they like to come out, come right through here, get a drink, and walk right through this pinch point. I shot a lot of deer right here in my ears, so as you can tell, gray hair and gray beard has been a few. Just got off work, buzzed out here. We got out the old face foam. So. Paul's one of those guys that he loves, he'll hunt a particular deer, but Paul's all about just hunting deer. He wants to go where the deer are going to be moving. He hangs his stands accordingly to get to, you know, up his best chances that he can during the rut of a big deer walking by. Paul will name some deer, and then some deer are just called wall hangers. There's no defining moment. They're all wall hangers once they hit a certain size. And if you're a wall hanger and you walk by Paul Jansen, you're gonna get shot. It's November 5th, 2020. We're on the same stand we did last night. We had a big buck. Oh, there's another one right there.
Paul's sitting in his stand, and all of a sudden, you know, and it's a November 11th, all of a sudden, the woods just bust open. Deer just start moving everywhere. There's a couple of bucks chasing a doe. And it's just one of those days that you just know something's going to happen. Mac. take it as you can tell on the video he came right up over that creek bank he stood there trying to look where it was at and I think he was looking right underneath us he came up here he's going to try getting downwind wherever he heard this but the old prime and g5 talked him out of it like I said before if you're considered a wall hanger and you walk by Paul Jansen you're going to get thumped and he thumped this deer at 30 yards as you can see and that deer goes out there, loses his wheels. You can tell on the footage that that deer pretty much fell down right where it did. But Paul was self-filming, kind of lost it. He saw that other small buck, then he kind of went back. But he gave it a little time just to be safe. Finds the deer. Successful hunt. Great job, Paul. Great shot with your prime. 
Oh yeah, I just got down. I'm gonna go tiptoe over here and check my arrow. See what we've got. Back to self-filming is always a trick, but it's rewarding when you know you can get it done. Put in all the extra hard work. And it is a lot of hard work. But let's go over here and take a peek and see what we can find. Here in Illinois, you gotta tag your animal before you move them. So, you get your head tag. A zip tie here. He's tagged up and legal beagle. Well, we got him dug out. Got my backup cameraman, Kirk. He got out of the woods. This is deer off of the new farm. I do have trail cam pictures off the Spartan. Um, new farm, awesome. Um, thanks to all the sponsors that really make stuff like this happen. Has, you know, phase. Scent control, that's number one. You've got to worry about your scent control. Uh, prime, archery, the bow's awesome. Black Eagle arrows, Montec broadheads, Cobra releases, Tenzing camera backpacks, Mossy Oak, Vortex, optics. I mean, we can't be any more thankful than what you guys do for us just so we can do what we love and we appreciate it greatly. But we got him out he's got 13 scoreable points but we have noticed on the tips he still has velvet a lot of tines are broke his rack is fragile as you can tell I had to tape it back on I don't know what's going on maybe he's a survivor of EHD this year um, but he's got real hollow almost like a malo I want to call it on his beams he's just real fragile but like I said all of his tips are cut off broke off never fully developed but he's a great buck old warrior I couldn't be any happier all right now let's jump in the tree with Kenny Kenny Bevins is from Indiana Kenny's been a long time friend of mine met Kenny back Jeez, what was it? Like 07, 08, somewhere in there, him and James. Kenny's just been a part of my life for a long time. You know, we've filmed together, we've fought together, we've yelled at each other together. Uh, you name it, we're just like brothers. But Kenny is really important to Whitetail Edge because Kenny has a particular set of skills. He's kind of like Liam Neeson. You know, he has a particular set of skills and his skills are filming. Kenny is great at time lapses. There's nobody on the planet any, be any better than making time lapses for the hunting industry. Kenny's just got a talent for it. He's great at it. He creates awesome footage for us to use in our shows, and there's other shows out there that use his stuff. You know, Kenny went through a rough spell. Here this past year, he lost his mom. He lost his dad a little while before that. And then this past year, he, you know, he lost his mom. So it's been a rough bout for Kenny, but I know he's gonna get through it and he'll be fine. I wanna dedicate this show to, to Kenny's parents because his dad especially was always asking questions about Ben, you know, with Kenny. You seen Ben, you talked to Ben, how's Ben doing? Ben killing anything, you know, and his dad is just one of them old hillbillies that 
you know, worked hard his whole life. He acquired some property for his family to have to hunt on. He's passed it down in the generations, and now the grandsons, the nephews, things like that, and Kenny and them are all hunting this property, and um, just great people, just great family. So, Kenny, this show is dedicated to your mom and dad this year. Food plot set. I'm gonna pack up. I got about an hour drive home. I'm beat. Um, just gotta pack the rest of my camera stuff up, my drone, and. Uh, Stay tuned, hopefully this food pot pays off and um, we'll see what happens in the fall. Kenny is really good at making food plots too. Kenny's big about land management on his lease. Uh, and as you can see by this drone footage, the plots that he puts in using the redneck ghillie blinds. Kenny knows his lease like the back of his hand. And he's got a really nice deer on the property this year. It's a basic big giant eight point. As you can see in this hunt, how Kenny handles this deer when he finally gets a look at him. So dry, so dry here right now. Um, it's past time for needing rain. The food plots are, they are what they are at this at this uh, moment. So not much I can do. So get some of these beads down, put it in the oven and uh, let this little mock scrape cook. So. Black Widow. Ranch butter, this stuff's golden. Managed to get get it on my hands. It's gonna smell good in my truck. Maybe I'll bring in a big monster buck to my to my truck and uh, make it easy. So, stay tuned. We'll see how this turns out, and I'll post some pictures of anything that ends up coming to this. Uh, I'm gonna move to my next next uh, camera and Spartan camera and do the same thing. So, we'll see. I can't be too loud. There's a two and a half year old buck bedded 30 yards from me to my right. He came in here chasing a doe and then she peeled off and he just kind of kind of hung around and bedded down now. It's starting to warm up. It feels pretty good right now, but I imagine another hour it'll be getting too hot. The woods have calmed down, so I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just going to hang out here for a couple more hours, and we'll see what goes on. They always bed underneath me. It's kind of crazy. You can't get any relaxation when, when they bed underneath you. season but I just can't get lucky I wish I was been a, a four and a half or five and a half year old buck but he came down this cool weather in the morning they always come down and eat on the soybeans for about 30 40 minutes then they'll venture back up and browse in the woods and bed and then they'll come back down throughout the day it's what I've noticed Good stuff.
goodness. That was as close as it could have been. It took everything in me to pass him up. He's going to be a giant next year. I got some little does in front of me. He's, he's down at the end of the field rubbing. Um, I'm shaking. That's a big buck, but he's four and a half. He's, he, I can tell by his body. He, if I let him live one more year, he's going to be a giant. He might be my first booner. Tomorrow's the last day of gun season in Indiana, so I'm praying that he makes it through. Where he's at right now, the road is just another 500 yards. I know somebody's hunting right over the road, so I'm hoping I don't want to spook him over there until it's past shooting light. I don't know, man. I might regret that, but I might have to eat tag soup. That's the first time I've seen him on the hoof. I've watched him all summer. I didn't know what I'd do when I got him in front of me. You know, I guess you just seen. I passed him up. I don't know if it's the right decision or not, but it's too late now. Now you can see that, you know, Kenny didn't shoot this deer. He's had multiple opportunities, but Kenny knows that this deer could be a giant next year and he could survive. And he doesn't want to kill him. You know, he's a four and a half year old deer. He wants this deer to get to five and a half years old to see what he can be. And the deer survived. It made it through the season. And that's awesome because I can't wait to see Kenny put this deer down this year. But Again, it just proves to you that by planting the food plots and not pressuring your lease too much and hunting the right winds, using the right equipment, and just knowing how to hunt your property, you'll be on these deer. And that's exactly what Kenny's doing here and showing us how he can get on these deer, hunting out of these blinds on these food plots. Another reason Kenny passed this deer is that you can tell by all the Spartan camera pictures of this deer. He's had pictures of this deer since the day he started growing. And he knew this deer was a homeboy he pretty much knew that if he could get the deer to survive through the season, he was going to be here again next this coming year, and he'd have a chance to harvest them. Hi, Ben Rising here with Black Widow Deer Lures. On our show, Whitetail Edge, we're always looking for that one little thing to get the dupe on a big buck. For us, so just become Black Widow Deer Lures. Yes! Yes, baby! Yeah. Yes! Black Widow Deer Lures, never brown or broken down, and always fresh. All right, so now that Kenny's out of the picture, we're going back to Illinois with Paul Jansen and the boys. And again, like I've said before, Paul really enjoys hunting with his boys. When gun season comes in in the state of Illinois, it's a huge family tradition for the Jansen family. Hopefully it shows up if the trail cameras don't lie. And give him the old one too. <laughs> I'm not cold and excited. What do you think? I don't know. Excited. I'm speechless. I don't know what to do. So there's not a whole lot other to say than the Jansen boys just like shooting deer. Like Paul says, he's got names for some deer, and some are just wall hangers, and some are just deer they kill. With Gage, 
There's no holes barred. If that deer's got horns and he's walking by, the yeah, he's gonna put a slug in his side. And that's just basically what's gonna happen. So, and that's awesome because truthfully, when you're that age, and that's how you learn to become a great hunter. It really is. I mean, Gage is going to be a killer the rest of his life because his dad has let the reins up and just let Gage go at it. It's going to turn Gage into a seasoned hunter, and when he's a little bit older and he's ready to buckle down, start hunting big deer on his own, he's going to be so far ahead of the game when it comes to keeping your nerves in check and shooting deer. stuff everywhere ready it's just cracking light checking in we got a spartan right here we got a couple old farm planes that meat that kind of makes an x right here and i still got three shooters left on this farm that first gun season they survived so i'm in their core area this is the first time i've sat this set i did not want to come in here that's their bedroom The second gun season is gonna last the last hoorah for us Illinois boys. But I'm gonna sit tight, it's a cold 24 degree morning. Jack Frost self-filming again, but I'll do my best. It just feels right this morning. Go down, baby. Go down. Go down. Man, I tell you what. I am so excited this morning. Where'd you go, baby? Look at that. Oh, boy. Well, I can't see him with the vortex binoculars, but I, I know he's got to be right there because I never seen him get up a move or anything else after he laid down, but... Fingers crossed, we should be good. The old smoke pole. Vortex optics on the old smoke pole. And the binoculars, that did me a big, big favor today. But I'm pretty sure he's one of my big 10 pointers, but yeah, it happened so fast. But he just come in right down here and he was about to catch my wind. But I got a bunch of does and little bucks that are back here. I'm just gonna wait for them to move off and I'm gonna get down there and check it out, but that definitely happened quick. Down. So we're gonna go walk up here and see what's going on. Like I said, I'm pretty sure he went down back here behind some bushes and sticker bushes, but I can't I can't tell from up here, so we're gonna get out and walk around the edge of the field and see what we got. Uh. Big old body on him. Man, he got a time broke off. That's awesome. Self filming. It's hard to do, but this is what we love to do. It may not be perfect, but it's memories that it's always going to be with me and I'm never going to forget it. But yeah, he's a dandy. Dandy buck. I don't even, I'll have to double check all the Spartans, but I'm not 100% sure which one he is. So if you take anything away from this hunt, have fun with your kids out there. You know, it's not always about killing the biggest buck. Um, even at Whitetail Edge here, you know, I know that you see me try to hunt the biggest deer I can find, but that's just because that's my challenge. I've killed so many deer in my life that 
my challenge when it comes to archery hunting or things like that, I want to hunt a big deer. I want to hunt a big mature deer. I don't get anything out of hunting a smaller buck anymore. And I'm fortunate that I live in an area where there's big deer and I've said it over and over again, you can only kill as big a deer that live in the area that you hunt or the state that you live in. So it's all relative as to where you live. Don't take the fun out of it for your kids or youngsters growing up. All this stuff on social media about these young kids and you know managing deer and it just drives me crazy anymore. Just go out there and have fun and learn how to hunt and just enjoy the sport. Well Paul, I really appreciate you taking your kids hunting like you do. It's awesome to watch that family time and the way you keep the tradition in the Jansen family of gun season, spending time with your boys and knocking deer down. This is what we love to do. It's memories that it's always going to be with me and I'm never going to forget it. Thanks again for watching Whitetail Edge. Catch us again right here next week on Mossy Oak What matters to you right now? If this past year has taught us anything at all, it's that we need to redefine what matters to us. What matters to us is spending time with our people. God, we thank you for this food. And giving thanks for all that we've been given. At Mossy Oak, what matters to us is helping you get closer to nature. What matters to us is in our DNA. Another cup, another tank of gas One more road sign I just passed it Looks like I'll be just in time To see that sunrise in the blind Guys, <clears throat> it's early Sunday morning, and uh, I decided to go pull one of my cameras. I've been kind of curious about checking. Uh, I've never put a camera on this property. I found a giant rogue in here last time. I've been in here 15 minutes walking, and I just found the first shed ever off the property. It's for, for a dang good one. Check it out. Ooh, wouldn't surprise me if this was the dude that did some of the damage. That there is like a 12, 13 inch G2 and G3. Wow. Wow. That's what I'm talking about. Ooh. I, wouldn't, I do not mind picking up more of them. What if that match one's right around here? I saw, oh my gosh, while oh, I'm filming this. <laughs> Look at that. Match set. First match set in a while. That is awesome. Man, freaking awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Match set, 15 minutes of walking this morning. I wish it always worked out that way, but you know it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> awesome, yes. This story begins in 2016 when I got permission on a new farm here in Southern Iowa. As, as I would have it, I decided to go ahead and do some shed hunting on a weekend trip and start you know, scouting the farm, getting my boots on the ground, 
And lo and behold, right out of the gate, I find a great 10 point match set of sheds. And he's an absolute stellar deer. No idea who he was or anything, but just finding those sheds got me fired up to in the future hunt that farm. In 2017, I'd moved back to Iowa, had my residency, and got my first Iowa bow tag again. And with that being said, man, it was time to get cameras out and let the fun work begin. As the summer progressed, I started to get some great deer on camera. Uh, on a different farm, I had a buck I called Jim. He was a big, uh, pretty much six by seven, I think is what he was. Um, super great deer, mid 170s, low 170s. And he had my eyes, like my heart set on him. And so I knew that was the deer I was gonna go after in 2017. While we're walking in right now, we have a really, really strong northwest wind. We're going in here after Jim again. I'm selling this to you as long as the wind is right. I'm getting aggressive with this deer. As November came to a close, I checked a camera on a small 10 acre farm. And sure enough, I had a beautiful, probably 160 inch 10 pointer on camera. He had a big split brow, and I'd never even seen him before. Um, but the cool thing was, I knew I had a shooter there. But the problem was, I was going to be gone uh, filming for work on another farm, probably an hour away. That is crazy. There he is. What in the world? Look at that. That is a freak. Yeah, I will say that's a trophy of trophies, dude. After season ended, like always, we go pull our cameras and check all the cards. And sure enough, that 10 pointer just showed up more and more on camera. And he had me very excited for the next coming year, 2018. And man, it was definitely going to be an exciting year that uh, definitely got me addicted uh, to the pursuit of this deer. October 1st is opening day here in Iowa, and sure enough, I went ahead and hit the woods. I was going after a buck called Framey, the big nine pointer, and wouldn't luck have it. Three hours later, maybe two hours into the hunt, out steps Framey, and I, he presented me with a great shot at 10 yards, and the rest is history. Smoked him, dude. <laughs> dude he got him. <laughs> As luck would have it, that big 10 pointer showed up on October 13th, right in front of my camera, under my stand. Problem was, my tag's already filled, so there's nothing I can do until uh, gun season, late season. So, at that point, this buck was given the name Fair Game. And that being said, I didn't care who uh, killed him. If it wasn't me, I just really wanted to be one of my friends to get him. At that point, the chase was on. We're on a great farm this afternoon. The weather is awesome. Got a little bit of light drizzle here and there. Um, finally cooled down. And we know that we've got at least one buck that probably goes over 170 and a couple others that are definite shooters. So uh, we're excited about this set. And if we, if we get any kind of luck, hopefully one of the shooters will show up and I'll make the shot. As the rut came to full swing, uh, Curtis and I went out and sat uh, after a fair game. And sure enough, it was a beautiful evening, uh, saw quite a bit of deer, and at last light, I mean the very last bit of light, here came fair game. Shooter, for sure. I think it's that white deer. We're gonna be at light though. First time I've ever laid eyes on him, he was a giant. Problem was, there's like no video footage of them hardly at all. I can make it out and blow it up on the screen, but it's dark, dark. Um, but he was there pushing does around and I knew it. Uh, but man, it felt great knowing that deer was there and just to lay my eyes on him, it got me chilled. And at that point, I knew eventually we would get this deer down the ground.
as late season approached, you know, this deer started to show up more and more frequently and my obsession grew. Um, but with that being said, it was December 2nd and I was over at Jake Goodwin's house just hanging out and doing the normal thing. And after I left his house, I'm just driving and I get to this cornfield or a hay field and I turn the vehicle, my lights are on, my head, my brights are, and not even kidding you, right there was fair game with several does. He was dogging them, almost like a secondary rut, and holy smokes, I couldn't believe it. I happened to have the video camera with me and, and got to watch him in all his glory, right in my headlights. That's him, that's the white tin I'm after. You gotta be kidding me. And knowing this deer was literally 75, 80 yards away from me, but there's nothing I could do. It just uh, ground my gears knowing that the journey's still just begun. As I continued to chase fair game, I tried to knock on more doors, get more permission on other farms, and I ended up picking up this 40. Well, this 40 was kind of on the backside of a big block of timber, and uh, where I figured he was living. And anyways, there was a lot of deer hitting it uh, in late November, early December. And I decided one night, I'm gonna go out there and just glass it, see what I see for deer movement. As I pulled up to this new 40, um, sure enough, first night, right there is double main beam. The buck that I was actually interested in going after uh, over the summer and beginning of the fall. And man, he looked awesome. He was pushing and dog and does. Well, it was first shotgun season, and sure enough, Jake, good one, had a first shotgun tag, so you knew exactly where I was going to be bringing him. So every year I go out and I get a shotgun tag, and that's about the time bow season will close down for a couple weeks. So me and Ian will go out, and uh, he'll film me during gun season. We went out to this farm we'd just gotten permission on that year, and uh, we got gotten some good pictures, seen some great bucks on it, so we went and decided to hunt the east side of this farm because we had a, a buck that we called Double Main that consistently showed up every couple of nights. While we were sitting there, we got pictures on one of our other trail cameras of a shooter buck and uh, just kind of decided a split second decision, decision to make our move to the west side of the farm and kind of tuck down on the hill over there. We just got four bucks coming out. One of them is a buck that we nicknamed Squirtly Dan. He's a real good sized buck. We're going to try and come up, get over this next hill, hopefully get a good stock on him and get a good shot. We're going to see what happens. Hopefully this one works out. He's a real nice deer. At this moment, as we're trucking it across uh, down the road, I would never, ever have expected what was about to happen. So we got over to the west side and started coming around the base of the hill, working our way to the top, and caught our first glimpse of antlers. And it took a little bit to realize which buck it was, and it wound up being fair game. It's big. No. It's fair game. It's fair game. Look at my camera. But at the time, I didn't have a great shot. It was from about the white patch on the neck up to the up to his head. So we sat, waited him out for a while, and then decided our best move would be keep the blind between him and us and sneak up behind him for hopefully a better shot. Whenever you can shoot him, I'm on him, buddy. I don't know if you can see his body or not. See if he comes out at us. And about that time, he saw some movement or something he didn't like, and he started leaving the field. If he gets behind that blind, we're running to the blind, okay? I know he is. Wait, listen to me, Jake. Right now. So we had fair game, uh, and then we had the blind in between us and him. So Jake and I took off running directly at him and uh, managed to get within 100 yards of him. And Jake immediately popped up the gun. I peeked around the blinds of the camera. Right there is fair game. And let's just say Jake missed. There he is. 
düşüyorum. Ciğerim. Ciğerim. Ben onu almayayım. I might have got him on the second. <laughs> After I took my shot, I kind of had a gut feeling that I missed. Was kind of hoping I didn't. Um, it was kind of surreal, and it happened really fast. Uh, about the time I poked out from behind the blind um, on a knee, Ian was just above me with the camera, and I think that's just all he saw that he needed to to realize it was a bad situation. So. After taking my shot, I sat down, kind of had to gather my thoughts a little bit, and uh, we decided to go up and see what we could see, if there's any fur, blood, anything that indicated that I hit him, and there was nothing. Hope that's not like the one chance we get at him. <laughs> it's right. running a million miles an hour right now. I really want to go see if we can find blood. After already having now two years of history with this buck, going into the 2019 deer season, I couldn't have been more excited and ready to go after a specific deer. Let's just say you do not want to mix next week's episode. I'm but a boy, though I own a heart as old as cold. Searching for something in the forest where I stroll. I am out here, cause I got nowhere to go. The open air and the trees known to sue. So we're headed to Missouri and we're headed to Iowa for the annual Outdoor Dream Foundation hunt. This is a hunt that we look forward to each and every year. But this hunt would not be possible without the help of a lot of people. Mr. and Mrs. Ed and Nancy Anders with the Rest in Him Lodge. They provide all of the housing for the kids and all for all the guides. The Missouri Department of Conservation, the Iowa Department of Natural Resources, and the Missouri Disabled Sportsmen. Without them, honestly, this hunt would not be the success that it is. Well, first up to bat is Mr. Will Asbell. You know, Will has had a brain tumor behind his left eye since he's been seven months old. He's now 15 years old. Every day of his life, he goes through chemo and radiation. It's something that I couldn't even imagine. But for this hunt, we're gonna watch the Lord show up and show out in a big way. Yeah, Lord, let's show you have a great hunt. Have a great time tonight. For the last evening, and hope we have a successful hunt. Hope we get us a big owl giant tonight. Do you want to be pretty, man?
Smoke the giant. Did ya? Congratulations, what'd you get? A big, was a big 10? It's a ginormous 10. Oh yeah, well that's exciting, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, did we get good footage? Did you see him drop? Oh yeah, I th he's, there's, he couldn't have ran far into the woods. He, he smoked him, Randy. We have, uh, hunted hard the last couple of days. Real hard. Not a real hard. And uh, sometimes it's just in God's plans when things work out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, Will said a prayer that he'd harvest him a deer. Hey, and it paid off. It paid off. Good Lord answered that prayer to anybody. Yes, sir. Absolutely. You know, sometimes in life, things don't go our way. We watched Will with a great big eight point, a nice 12 point already in the field, and we were hoping to get a shot off on those deer. You know, it didn't work out that way. We watched those deer leave the field, and our hearts were sort of broken a little bit. But you know, God had other plans. He knew that that 10 point would walk into the field. You know, Will, just a couple weeks prior to this hunt, had to have some blood transfusions. We didn't even think Will would get to be at this hunt. You know, each one of those kids every year has a smile on their face. I never see anything negative come out of them. I think we could learn a big lesson from those kids. You know, life is not giving them the best cup of tea, so to speak. But each day is a joy that they take. They, there's a happiness there. They're thankful for another day. But just like in Will's hunt, when we didn't think everything was going right, 
we realized that God had another plan. God may have another plan for you in your life. Sometimes when things don't go right in your life and you're going through troubles and trials and tests, remember that you can't have a testimony without first going through a test. I don't know what to say. Oh, God. Hot dog. Nice buck. I don't know what to say, man. I don't know what to say. How far? Yeah. How far did he go? What are you trying to say? Wow, that is. Wow, that is. How far did you drag it? This segment of BOD TV is brought to you by Muddy Outdoors. Your muddy moment starts at GoMuddy.com. Welcome back to another episode of Leopold's Dream Season Live powered by DeerCast. We're following along during that magical Halloween weekend. We're going to first jump in the blind with Michael Heffernan and his son Hunter as they go out for the Missouri U season. And then we're going to head to Iowa and meet up with Chris Duncan and a deer that he calls Wishbone. We're in that pre-lock phase and Wishbone's giving Chris the runaround. go October 30th 2021 uh, Missouri youth hunt We've got my oldest son in the back deer cast says good this morning we got bucks on the cameras we're headed to a biologic radish plot we're gonna set the decoy out and hit the horns at, at daybreak and uh, hopefully something good happens we got a little hiccup in our hunt this year hunters tore his tibia and LCL and MCL in football so we're gonna have to drive them all the way to the blind and Hopefully we can make it work. So here we go. Thank you. 
stop. Yes. Mac. Did you hear him? Did he get him? Did he get him? I don't know. Did you get him? Are you sure? Yes. I thought I saw blood, baby. The decoy. The decoy. He scared him. No, he didn't know what was going on. He snuck up on us. Yeah, and you thought I was joking. <laughs> Can't be. I'm pretty sure I saw. Go get my crutches, Dad. Oh, well, I'm second. I'm all second. I'm pretty sure I saw blood when he was running away. That, that's that's probably the big guy. We know the neighbor, a couple farms down. This is a buddy I grew up with, and his nephew's out there. And we just shot, he just shot, like two minutes later. Hunter and I were joking back and forth. <laughs> he said he saw, he told me, don't move. And I freaked out, and he goes, oh, just a squirrel. <laughs> Messing with me, I look down at my phone, and Hunter says, buck, and I'm just like, yeah, right, whatever. And then he, and he goes, dad, look right now. And I look up, and there's a good eight-pointer standing there. Gosh, darn it, that was exciting. Biggest buck yet. That was a good eight. Hunter just shot this buck about 10 minutes, probably 15 minutes ago. Jen and I are headed to the truck. We're gonna grab his crutches and head out in the radish plot, look for blood and try to go track him. Deer cast track. We looked at it, shot looked good. So we saw blood pumping in the footage. So we feel confident he's done already, expired. We're gonna hopefully fill a tag this morning on this first day of youth season. Radishes look good. I don't feel very good on the crutches. Got good blood right here, Hunter. Let's see where he went in. Huh? He's dead back there. I'll be done. Boy, he looks, looks a lot better than I thought he was. He died in the perfect spot. Yeah. Right on the logging road, be easy to come get him. Firearm any deer notched. Tell check now. All right, buddy. Well, here we are, Halloween weekend and opening day of youth season in Missouri. And my oldest son here just shot his biggest buck to date over this radish plot with the decoy. Man, what a hunt it was. And golly, we were just sitting there talking and kind of joking back and forth, playing tricks on each other, saying, oh, there's a deer and there wouldn't be one and stuff like that. And Hunter goes, buck, and I'm sitting there like, yeah, right, there, there's nothing. And I, I look up and there's this deer in bow range just staring at us. He actually stomped a couple times, but that decoy in the radish, in the biologic, biologic radish did the trick. He uh, quickly quit, quit paying attention to us and started walking out to this buck decoy and Hunter laid the Winchester down on him and it was an awesome morning. Halloween weekend. Kids are gonna have fun trick-or-treating tonight. We got a party to go to it at church. We were hoping to fill a tag this morning because we were gonna have to miss our hunt tonight, but man, what a morning. Super pumped for my boy. That's his biggest buck. A good, he's a good eight with a kicker off his G2. That's his biggest yet. Heck yeah. Biologic radishes did the job as well as this decoy did. What a morning, I'm jacked up. Get ahead of your game with the DeerCast 10 day forecast. Well, standing here next to the back to back morel target, and because we do so much traveling and we go from farm to farm, you know, it's uh, not uncommon to set this thing out wherever you want to in the yard. Well, the old adage. Uh, aim small, miss small may apply. And on this thing, because on this end, 
these dots are all so much smaller, stay in tune all season long and try and start targeting these smaller dots. It's made of the flex back self-healing foam, which is one of the most impressive targets I've seen as long as we've been doing this, and I'm talking decades. So this is the absolute greatest target we've been around, regardless whether you're shooting practice tips, mechanical, fixed blade, it doesn't matter. Give this one a try. This is one I think you'll be impressed with. Here we go. We made it to the Hawk Blind. It is 4.30. I've got Brassicas here to my right, corn in front of me. We just need the right buck to show up. So we will uh, see what the night brings us. We've got over two hours left. Excited to see how this turns out. I literally just just grabbed my bow at a small buck, chased two does right here to the right. Those does are in the corn. So I grabbed my bow and I can't believe it, but my freaking sight was loose. I have no idea how that happened. And I've got a big doe at like 20 yards right now. Oh man. Okay guys, I apologize for the horrible footage here but uh, I actually left everything in the blind tonight. Um, uh, overall, it was a pretty good night considering that, that wind never died down. I mean, it was howling. I had probably 30 mile hour winds all night and it's still howling right now. As you can see from the footage, we saw a handful of does, saw a couple bucks, including um, one mature buck. It's a deer that we call um, Lefty. He's got a messed up side and um, I, I don't know how old he is, but I know he's he's mature. He just, uh, I don't know, not really what I was looking for. Tomorrow is a new day. Tomorrow is the 30th of October, and I think it's gonna be really, really good. So Blake will be filming me tomorrow. We'll be back in the afternoon, taking the morning off to shoot the bow, and we will catch up with you guys tomorrow afternoon. We're gonna go back to the same spot, I believe, unless the cameras tell me something to do that's different. But right now, that's the game plan. We will see you tomorrow. All right, here we are. It's the 30th. We're going back to the same blind on the same plot that I was at last night. Hoping one of the big gears show up. Big Max on that side of the farm, as well as that buck we call Dingus. So they were actually both on the cameras last night. There's a few other mature deer that I talked about you know, yesterday that could show up here as well. So should be a good night. Blake's behind the camera and uh, we're gonna get after it. We're finally seeing some action. We got a fawn in the plot and then a little bug. So starting to move.
cannot believe it. I thought you're 34, 35 yards quartering two. with him last year when he showed up on the cameras. I mean, he was one of those deer that there was no question, was he four or five or whatever? I mean, it was like he's five or older. And to have an opportunity like that, have it all come together. Here, I'm gonna make a phone call. Yeah. Hey, sweetheart, I just shot one. Sherry crash. Do you want us to come down there? I mean, I know you guys are all ready to go to your Halloween party, so. Yeah, we're pretty bloody right now. Yeah, we'll figure it out. If you just want to head this way, um, just head, meet me up at the entrance if you would. Where'd it go? Look at that. See that? Oh, shit, but Yeah. Look at that, Alice. Say, Ireland, you're gonna, you're gonna track it for us, okay? Okay. You gotta track it this way, look, sweetheart. Oh, look at all that blood. Dude, he's. Oh my god. It's dumping. Jesus, bro. Ouchie. Gosh, he's gotta be right there. There he is, I see him. I was gonna say, he's dead. Hey, he's girls, you're gonna be really careful right here. Dude, he's a, he's a tank. That's a giant body deer. He is a giant body deer. I mean, he our shot last That's night. That's huge! Big body, but this oh. is big body. Look at that head. Oh, it's, it's huge. <sighs> wow. wow. Okay, so here he is. He, uh, This is a deer we call Wishbone. And um, man, what an awesome hunt it was tonight. This is a deer that we've had a couple years of history with. It's um, super fat. It was about an hour left of light. He came into 32 yards and he was quartering two. So I didn't take the shot. I was being patient. And when he turned to leave, I mean, he just bolted. He was uh, after that doe again. And then right before uh, last shooting light, he came back in and gave me a 30 yard shot. Made the most of it. My first buck um, on a farm that I actually own, which will always be special to me. And Ireland and Alice and everybody were here to help. So it'll be fun getting him out of here. Dada. But then we will go celebrate and- uh, I love the light way We're going to a Halloween party. So let's get to work and but get this I guy out of here. Go. Oh, man. Hope you all enjoyed this week's episode. On the next episode, we're going to join up with Kirk Hendershot as he's after a buck on a farm that he's put a ton of work into. Then we're going to join up with newcomers and father-son duo Nick and Mason Morse as they try to take down a big buck in Missouri. So don't miss a moment of the action right here on DOD TV. core of all of us, there is a code, a roadmap that determines who we are. Our code is written in early morning sunrises and the anticipation of opening day. 
Our code is written by the moments that we experience with those we love the most. It's written by the feeling of our dirt in our hands. At Mossy Oak, our code is burned into every cell of our body. It's in our DNA. Hey, and just like that, a whole nother week, Mossy Oak Moments live down the tubes. But don't worry, we'll be back in seven days right here. More of this great content. Hey, if you don't have the Mossy Oak Go app on your phone, download it. Be sure and tell all your buddies about it. See you in a week.